Hi, I'm a product manager with the graph technologies at Oracle. And I'm going to talk to you about the in-memory graph server in this module. So what's the in-memory graph server, also known as PGX? This is technology developed by Oracle Labs and is designed to be a highly scalable server for running compute intensive graph oper operations. When a graph is in this graph server, you can run PGQL queries. That is PGQL is a property graph query language. You can, you can run graph queries in PGQL uh, against graphs in the graph server. You can also run graph algorithms against graphs in this graph server. Some of these graph operations can be compute intensive and the graph server has a specialized parallel architecture for highly scalable processing. For example, when we run the LDBC benchmark queries on graphs of size uh, 1.8 billion edges and 0.3 billion vertices, most of the queries run in milliseconds to seconds. The graph server can run standalone or in a container like Oracle WebLogic Server or Apache Tomcat. So for compute intensive processes when working with graphs, you really want to think about loading your graph into this graph server and running your queries and algorithms uh, there. So the PGX or the in-memory graph server can work with a variety of um, APIs and client tools. Uh, there is a Java and Python API you can use to interact with the graph server. Uh, you have, we have support for notebooks like Zeppelin and Jupyter. And we also have shell UIs for the Java and Python uh, clients uh, to do scripting and quick demos and so on. We also have a visualization tool that uh, helps you uh, explore graphs that are in the graph server, run queries and visualize the results uh, in this visualization tool and so on. So how do you get graphs into the graph server? Uh, you could typically, what people like to do is to load uh, data from database tables into a graph server. And uh, you can do that. And, and I will talk a little bit about how that's done. Or you can load data from files into the graph server or from a big data platform. You might have some graph files in uh, stored as STFS files in a Hadoop platform, and you can load from there into the graph server. So now let's look a little more closely at how we can load graphs into the in-memory graph server or PGX. So when you're loading from files, directly from files, you can load from plain text files or XML format based um, files. And you just make a simple call to read graph with properties API and you pass in some config parameters that tells you how to interpret these files, where the file is located and so on. And then the graph is loaded into memory and you can work with it using the client tools and APIs. Or the more popular option is to load from database tables because you already have your data in database tables and you want to read this into uh, the graph server. So you can again use the read graphic properties API and pass in a config file, which tells the graph server how to interpret uh, or how to translate data in tables. That is how to translate the tables and the columns in tables into edges and vertices in the graph, in the in-memory graph server or PGX. And, or you can also use a PGQL DDL statement that you can run to again map uh, tables in the database into edges and vertices uh, in, in PGX and then uh, create the graph when you execute this DDL statement. If you have the graph in plain text files but want to persist it in the database, you can load that into the database first and then use these APIs to load the data into the in-memory server. So we're loading, uh, into PGX, here's an example of the PGQL DDL syntax that I was talking about. So you have an accounts table, which is the vertices table. Then you have a transactions table, which in this case is an edges table. So you're specifying that I want this to be my vertex table and this to be my edge table. 
And for my edge table, this is going to be my source vertex, my destination vertex, and these are the properties that I want to have for the edge and any properties for the vertex, vectors as well. So you can execute this PGQL DDL in PGX, and then it would load uh, from database tables into uh, the in-memory graph server, or you can use this config file. Uh, and the config file does the same thing. It's specifying uh, which are the vertices and which are the edges, and then uh, loading that into, uh, into the in-memory graph server or PGX when you call this API. One other option, so we looked at, when you're loading from a database, we looked at this option, loading from standard database tables directly into PGX. You also have the option of creating a graph and storing it in the property graph schema. And you would do this if you want to persist the graph in the database. So even after the graph server session is, uh, graph server is brought down, if the session goes away, you still want to persist the graph and have access to the graph. You can do that by persisting the graph in the database. And this is, and this is also required if you want to run graph queries in the database. And you can also load from the property graph schema into PGX. So you can load directly from database tables or load from the property graph schema into PGX. So now that, let's take a look, just a brief look at how some of this uh, will look when you're actually running this. So here I'm going to connect using the JShell client UI to uh, a, the, the PGX server that I have running here. And you can see here that I've specified the, uh, the server, the server uh, address, and then I'm using the database user to authenticate myself to uh, PGX. And that is the uh, way to do it. You need to authenticate yourself to PGX. And then I'm going to now load, I'm going to use the config file that we just saw and to load this graph into memory. I can use PGQL DDL also, but here I'm just using the config file. And then I am going to just run a few simple queries, counting the number of edges, and then let's say counting the number of vertices. So we know that this graph has successfully loaded into memory. So let's see what this graph has uh, done when you, uh, what this looks like rather. So let me bring up um, this um, tool here, this visualization tool here that's running in the browser. So I can run uh, this PGQL query here to select edges from this graph. And this is talking to the graph server to retrieve uh, results from this graph server. So I can now decide to retrieve more, um, more uh, vertices, and then it will display, uh, it'll retrieve more vertices. And I can do uh, some more interesting queries where I can say, find me all the cycles in a graph. So I want to find all this, uh, three node cycles in a graph. And then I can run this query. And again, I'm communicating with PGX, the in-memory graph server, and getting the results back and displaying this in a browser. And you can see here, it got me 10 um, three node cycles that are in the graph. So thank you very much. This brings me to the end of this module.